Martin, thanks for sitting down with me today. Great to see you. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me to this interview. Um, Stockholm, beautiful city. It is a very nice city. I used to work here for many years, so I was happy to come back. Although I quickly discovered that the weather was not as nice <laughs> as it is in France, where I'm staying now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely true. Absolutely true. So, Martin, CPVO is got 25 years under its belt now. Can you talk to me a little bit about some of the key developments that have happened over the 25 years? Well, I think the system has been very successful. I think one of the key elements of that is actually the creation of a regional system where you have a possibility to make one application, uh, you have one decision, and you have a protection in 28 member states uh, before you needed to make a number of applications in various member states. Uh, so this has made the system very attractive to the industry. Uh, so the, the whole idea of the regional system, I think, is one of the main pillars. But then I think the CPVO has developed this. We have, uh, we have uh, user-friendly services. We are working very closely with the member states. Uh, and we have also, and I think that's the third part, which is extremely important, and that is the staff. We, are, we have staff which are very devoted, uh, very skilled. And uh, all those three components shows that we have quite a successful system. We have more applications every year and we have more titles in force every year. Uh, you could say that that's because we have the monopoly, but I would say without providing those services, uh, the system would not be as successful. So a successful system. Do, do you have, it would seem to me that there's some attempts to copy the system. Is, there, is that a good thing, a bad thing? Is that, um, how does that get handled? I think that it's ex excellent because we believe in our system. So if uh, countries outside the European Union wants to do similar projects, I think that's very good. And we are actually involved in, in some of these outreach projects. I think there are mainly two drivers. <coughs> we have the industry, the EU breeders. They look for businesses outside the European Union and they look for countries where they have and PVP system, which is in line with the UPOF Convention 91. They also look for places where they get an efficient processing of their applications. Um, in addition, we have the other driver, that's countries outside the European Union or regional systems that look to the CPVO on how to develop their own systems. So we are <coughs> assisting in that as well. We do everything from the processing of application, how to do the US test, the online system, um, and also uh, to, to provide for services and denominations and so on. So I think uh, uh, we are quite involved in that. We are, I can give you two practical examples. One is the IP key program, which is uh, sponsored by the European Commission. And that is a broader project, including a number of intellectual property rights. Uh, when it comes to the PVP issues, the CPVO is implementing that, and we are involved in IPK China, IPK Southeast Asia, and now IPK Latin America. So that's one very important project. Another project is together with UAPI, which is the African Regional Organization for Intellectual Property Rights, and they are uh, attempting to increase the quality and the sensibility of their system. And we have also in that respect a project which is uh, uh, supported by the European Commission for two years, and we are developing um, uh, a number of projects together with them. I understand the CPVO is also involved in the EU Invite project. Can you talk a little bit about that project as well? Well, it's first of all, I think it's in, I'm very happy that that project was started because it's a project which is also sponsored by the European Commission and it shows that the European Union uh, takes variety testing uh, very serious. So it's a project on improving variety testing. Uh, it's a project for five years and the CPO is involved in that together with 28 partners. And I think that the, uh, the, uh, synergies that can be made is to see how we can work together with the phenotyp, the genotype, how to use DNA techniques, how to create databases that could be used uh, by a number of stakeholders. So I think that <coughs> the project as such is, is very important. The CPVO provides a network uh, of examination offices and our experience in uh, managing a network 
we have also a specific role in the project, which is to ensure that data which is used by the project partners and coming from the examination offices are coded and are treated as confidential. So we have taken on that role, which I believe is quite important. Then we are also a member of the executive committee, which is more the governing board of the uh, project. I could perhaps just mention as well that uh, the INVITE project, we are partner in that, but there is another project called INNOVAR, which is also sponsored by the European Commission, also for the variety testing. And I think uh, it's excellent. We have two projects, 8 million euros for each, uh, running for five years. And uh, the CPO is happy to support both of them. And we hope that there can be some real outputs uh, of those two projects. Nice. Can I change gears for a, for a minute then? That's some great projects to be involved in. Um, with UPLOV 91, the EDV concept was introduced. Is, is, this, is this a good... Um, is this a good concept for us to... I, I guess what I'm looking for is your opinion. Well, I would say that it's, it's a very good concept. Mm. Uh, I think that uh, at the time when the 1991 uh, convention was negotiated, uh, there was a new moment of biotech coming into the uh, industry, uh, introducing uh, new genes into existing varieties. So I think it was a good um, uh, occasion to extend the scope of protection. So I think that the, the, uh, the notion of having EDVs is, is good. And I also think that you should not underestimate its value because um, uh, I think the mere fact that it exists it um, makes the industry negotiate with each other and they know often very well between themselves what is an EDV or very close to an EDV. So I think it's a self-regulatory thing to, to a large, large extent. Having said that, I'm of course aware that there are quite some problems in the text. The text is rather vague. And for that <coughs> reason, I think it's very important that uh, UPOV is providing guidelines. There is a discussion ongoing in UPOV to perhaps um, update the guidelines. I think it's also very important that the industry is involved. I know that the industry has created certain guidelines on threshold on a uh, DNA level. So if a certain threshold is reached, the burden of proof is reversed. So I think the industry takes its responsibility there and I think that's very important. Yeah. Then, I mean, if this would not work at all and there would be huge financial losses, you have to go to court. And there are not so many court cases and uh, there are lots of reasons perhaps for that. But I would say that if the financial losses were sufficiently substantial, then the, the industry would make use more of, of the courts. So... Um, in essence, I think it's a very good concept, uh, but it needs to be worked on for clarity reasons. Like most concepts. Yes, <laughs> like you're most right concepts. about that. <laughs> right. Um, lots of talk about plant breeding innovation. How do you see some of these new breeding techniques having an impact on plant breeders' rights or, or maybe even enforcement? <clears throat> well, first of all, I think these new breeding techniques, uh, they have a lot of promise. And I think they are very important. And I think they should be used for plant breeding and uh, they should be used without, well, it, they should be supported. And I think that the developments in the European Union now with these court cases, it's not going the right direction. So I think now the member states of the European Union, the Commission needs to look at this with a uh, scientific based view, uh, what is really a threat, what is not a threat, and then uh, go on with it so that we can use the most recent technology also in Europe. Uh, for the application of plant variety rights, in the short term at least, I don't think it will have too much effect because we still have the DUS criteria and um, that will not change. So if you, you should change a gene inside or turn it off or turn it on, uh, we would still use the DUS criteria. Perhaps we could uh, use these um, well, these appliances as a kind of an additional criteria, but uh, I, I don't see in the short term that that would change. In fact, we cannot check if a variety is an 
uh, used, well, if the, this technology has been used. We have to rely on the applicant because the test that we do, the DUS test, would not reveal in many cases whether such a technique has been used. I think that what perhaps some are uh, looking into more is that these new techniques may be patented and the patents, we get more patents in this area, perhaps that will have in the long term an effect of, of uh, the plant varieties, but, but it's very unsure. Well said. Thanks again for sitting down with me, Martin. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much, John.